And I hope it is well with each one of your souls today. And the only way that your soul can be made well, because your soul can only find rest in God and God alone. And if you don't have God, your soul is unrestful. So I pray and hope that this day, that Jesus will be the Lord of your life, will be the Savior of your soul. What a blessing it is to be here this morning. I believe God has a word for you this morning, a word for the church, and a word for you individually. I believe that some of us have been carrying burdens and sorrows and pains and things in our life that we're not able to carry, and Jesus doesn't want you to carry. He wants you to come to Him, all you are heavy laden and burdened, and you shall find rest for your soul in Him this morning. God has a word for the church this morning. I'm going to be preaching from an Old Testament text that you might be very familiar with. It's found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. The name and the title of the message today is God Has the Last Word. Amen? God has the last word. Many times we think of the difficulties and the things that we have gone through and we feel that things are over, but God has the last word. You may turn the news on and you see that our country is going in a spiral in the wrong direction, but God has the last word. You may look at family relationships, you may look at sickness and devastation, but God has the last word. Remember, the word of the Lord. He is going to speak to us today from His word. You know that it is His word that is true and let every man be a liar. There are many things that uh, we hear and well, sometimes you've got to crowd out the voices that are all around us. John spoke about John 1, 1 John 1, 7 where the Bible says if we walk in the light as He is in the light that the blood of Jesus will purify us from all sin. As we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we can have fellowship with one another. Uh, the blessing to that word is this. If you confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And He purifies us from all our unrighteousness. I want you to understand what the word confess means. Confess means being agreement with God. See, God has a word for you. And when we're in agreement with God's word, there is life there. You understand that? What a blessing that is. Ezekiel chapter 37, we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 14. Many are very familiar with the text of Ezekiel going through the valley of dead bones. You think of dead bones as something that looks perishable, something that has been long gone. Uh, matter of fact, the valley of dead bones were dry bones, meaning they, they've been there on the desert floor for some time. Uh, how many think of things in their own lives or their family's life that uh, there's things that look long past that they feel that there's no recovery? Today, I want you to understand that God has the last word. Amen? God has the last word. I want to pray in a moment. I want to stay true to the accuracy of the scripture, uh, to the historical text. I will just be briefly with that. But I want you to know that many will take this to be the resurrection chapter. It's talking about Israel. How many know that not all scripture is written to you, but all scripture is written for you? Okay? So this text was written to the historical Israel, okay, about them being raised from the dead. Their, their hope was gone. Uh, they were set off into exile. They were there over in Babylon. If they have defamed the name of God, they have turned their back on the one true God who has saved them. But God was saying, it's not over yet. God was saying, I'm not done with you. And so some of us this morning have might have turned our ways on back on God that have made me far from God even this morning. But God is saying, I'm not done with you. <laughs> that I have plans to prosper you. I have plans to give you a hope in the future and not to harm you. Because many times we see that the things that go on in our lives, we think that God, you're against me. God is not against you. God is for you. You understand that? God is for you. If you're sitting here this morning, God is with you. God is with you. 
God is not against you. And what we'll see in this text, although we want to be accurate with the historical setting, but God is writing this to us also. Because every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God is for us. Amen? And it is the word of God that is living and it is active and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it divides the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it searches the thoughts and the attitude and the heart. And it gives life as it's being spoken this morning. Now, I just uh, have to step back for a minute. And remember where I was before Christ gave life to me. I was dead in my sins and my transgressions. I was in a place where I thought that I knew better than God. I, I was a rebellious individual, and yet I needed God, but I could not come to the place of accepting God, because I thought that that was a weakness. But I'm here to tell you, it's up out of the weakness that you'll find your real strength. It's up out of that weakness that you'll find true life. Uh, I was dead in my sins and my transgressions, I was dead in the darkness of the things of this world, and yet God still pursued me. He was the hand of heaven. He drew me out of the darks of the depths of their despair, of hopelessness. Um, I was at places where I didn't want to go. I was around people I didn't want to be around. I did things I didn't want to do, things that I'm ashamed of. But Jesus washed me clean, and I'm a new man today because of what Jesus done. And he wants you to know that he has a word for you today. That all things are made new through him. Things that may be long in the past. The prophet Isaiah said something like this. Do you not perceive it? Do you not know it? That I'm doing a new thing. I'm making a way in the desert. I'm bringing streams in the wasteland. Do you know that there's no streams in the wasteland? That God is making a way in the desert where it looks dry and weary? But God is sending forth His Spirit. And it is the living waters that's going to be walking through here today. Because He has a word for you. And I'm excited. I feel like a pregnant woman sometimes. <laughs> I'm just ready to give birth, but God put it there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm birthed with the Word of God. Turn with me to Ezekiel 37. I'm going to read verses 1 through 14. <clears throat> the hand of the Lord came upon me, and it brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and it set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. And again, he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus say the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and, a, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. And indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them, but there were no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus say the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain so that they may live. So I prophesied and I was commanded, and breath came upon them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus say the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up from your graves, 
and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you from the graves. And I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. I will place you in your own land, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and performed it, says the Lord. Father, again, we pray for great understanding of your word this morning. Father, we know that you are talking here to historic Israel. And Father, part of the fulfillment has taken place. And Father, we know what you say to be true. That your word be spoken shall take place. And so this morning, Lord, help us to understand what you are declaring to us as individuals, as a church, and as a future for the church. And Lord, we'll thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. It's interesting, you're starting in the first couple of verses, it says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a priest. He was sent into exile, probably uh, around uh, um, 600 B.C. Contemporaries, you may know, Daniel, Jeremiah, uh, there are those that were prophesying, they were speaking the Word of God around this time. But it, Ezekiel was a priest that was sent into Babylon, and there he was getting visions from God to encourage Israel, because Israel was now off in exile, off in despair, off in hopelessness, taken from their homeland. They had no vision, they had no hope. Do you know that when it's dark, when there seems like there's no hope, God sends a word. God sends a word and says that I have called you from the ends of the earth. I have taken you from the farthest corners. I have chosen you. I have not rejected you. That I am your God. He is saying that to you this morning. If you feel that you're distant from God. You feel that you're in a, in a dark spot or a far corner where you feel no hope. God is calling you forth this morning. He is saying I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you with love and kindness. That word is for you, individual. You may sitting here this morning and say, My hope is gone. My bones are dry. But God has a word for you this morning. He spoke to Ezekiel to go ahead and prophesy. Prophecy, again, is not foretelling. There's a school out there that says prophecy is foretelling. Prophecy is foretelling. God's word. You understand the difference? I'm not here to fortune tell you about something. What you're, I'm here to forth tell you what God has already said about you. You see, your faith does not build promise. Promise builds faith. You understand the difference? We have faith because of the promises that God has already made. Glory to God. We are children of the Most High God. And that builds my faith. And therefore, I can speak the promises because God already declared them. God said to Abraham, come out of the land of the Chaldeans. I'll give you a land and you shall be a, a, a blessing for those who bless you. And you shall have many across the nations. And many will you father. And here his loins were as good as dead. And a hundred years old, not able to go ahead and give birth. But he stood on the promises. The Bible says without wavering because... He remembered God's promises. Your faith does not build promises. Promises build your faith. And the Word of God, when you look at the Word of God, is what builds you up. See, when you see the Word, when you stand on the firm foundation, Jesus is the Word, and He's the one who lives within us. Israel had no hope, my friends. Here they are, they're in a a distant land. They have turned their backs on God. They felt like, man, it's over. There, there's no hope for me in my life. I've, I've really, I've really rejected it. Now, I, I rejected what God has given to us, and, and I turn my back on what God has given me. And there, there's really no other hope for me. What do I do in a place like this? I'm just going to sulk, and I'm just going to forget it, and I'm just going to turn to be bitter. No, I'm here to tell you that God has something. 
God is not done with you. God has a hope for you. How many know that in a moment's time, if when we turn to God, the Bible says we confess our sin, He faithful and just to forgive us of our sin, to purify us from all our unrighteousness. God has birthed hope into us when we feel like there is no hope. Amen? Because of the promises that God has. And He says He has a hope for us, not to harm us, to give us a hope in the future. We serve the God of hope. And He wants to... He wants to fill you with this, this with all joy and peace as you hope in Him. You want joy and you want peace? Put your hope in Him. Not on the things in this world. Last week we spoke about we're not we're citizens of heaven. Although we're in this world, we're not of this world. That's why our minds need to be on things that are above. Amen? Our minds have to be on things that are above. It's interesting here. That God brought Ezekiel on a vision into a desert. Do you know that in the desert, in the valley, it's dry, it's weary. There, there's no life in the desert. But God is saying, I'm going to birth something out of something dead. Amen? God calls things that are not as if they were. You get it? Praise the Lord for that. Because when I can't see anything and I have no hope, God says, I'm pulling from there and I'm going to make something visible out of the invisible. It. That's how God creates. That's what God speaks. He brought Ezekiel into a valley. And many times, you know, uh, we quote the verses and we say, uh, where does my help come from? I look unto the hills. And that's where my help comes from. To the maker of heaven and earth. To the Lord, I look to the hills. But God is not just the God of the hills. He's the God of the valleys too. God is in the valleys. Because sometimes in the valley is where he gets your attention. Amen? We're not listening at times until we're in the valley. But when we're in the valley, oh God, my hope is gone. Oh God, everything I thought would be is gone. And you would think humanity might turn their back on you. But God says, I'd love to with everlasting love loved you this much. Even in your valley, in your darkness, in your despair, in your hopelessness, God will never reject you. He is drawing you in the valley. Ezekiel, he couldn't see it. God said to him, can these bones live, Ezekiel? Guess what he said? Only you know it, Lord. See, God is the answer to everything. He knows. He knows. He knows right where you're at. He knows what you're doing. God's word said if Israel would turn their backs on him, he would turn their back, his back on them. And in a sense, he allowed them to come to a place of hopelessness so that he could only birth hope. There they were. Israel. How do I know it was Israel? You look at verse 11. And he said to me, son of man, what are, the, what are these bones? It's the whole house of Israel. That's what it was. It was the whole house of Israel. That was the dry bones. Uh, the one that God's people... He allowed to get to the valleys. He allowed to be into exile. Allowed to lose all their hope. So only he could birth real hope into them. And give real life to them. Verse 7 tells us something interesting. It talks about, so I prophesied as I was commanded. He was supposed to speak to something that was dead. Do you know that it is the word of God that brings forth life? It is the word that I'm speaking to you today that would raise you up from your despair and your hopelessness. That will renew your mind and your thought pattern to remove, renew the way that you see things. Do you know that we're, we're to look at things through the lens of God, not through the lens of the world? And God wants to open your eyes 
That's why he, uh, the Apostle Paul, he prayed for the church uh, at Ephesus. I pray that the eyes of their heart may be enlightened in order to know the hope of which you have been called to the glorious inheritance of the saints. He prayed for them that they would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they would know God better. You see, when we walk in the sight of this world and we walk by our sight and not by our faith, All we have is despair. That's why the scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight. You see the difference? <clears throat> we walk by faith and not by sight. And again, faith does not bring about the promises. The promises bring about the faith. See, if we don't know the promises of God, we sit there and we sang, you know, standing on the promises of God. But do you know the promises of God that he has for you? That he loves you? And everything is yes and amen and in Christ. So there's nothing too hard for God. Nothing too difficult for God. There's nothing too, uh, that's gone too far for God. For Him to revive and to make new again. Because that's exactly what this prophecy was about. Prophesy to the dead things. Speak the words of God and bring forth life. Can't you see that I'm doing a new thing? I have taken something that has been long gone and given it life again. And so we see in verse 7, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Do you know when God speaks this word like this, not everybody is going to receive it. There are going to be some that are very like on the religious set per se, that they can't take the very Word of God, the Spirit of God moving. They always say, well, calm down a little bit. Now you, come on now, we got to get things back in order. No, God's Word, when it goes forth, it severs. See, Hebrews 4.12, God's Word is alive, it's powerful. We don't serve a dead God, we serve a risen God. Jesus is here this morning with a word for you. You understand? God is here this morning. This is not a dead religion. This is not just something a road that you go through. Well, I gotta get it out of the way. I gotta check the box before I go to lunch. No, God loves you with an everlasting love. And He has an eternal word for you. You see, His word stands firm in the heaven and is not moved. It's an eternal word. And what that means, what that means, what God declared in His promises, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Because even in this prophecy of Scripture, things that were long dead, that God says, I'm going to bring you back from Babylon unto your homeland, happened in 1947. God started bringing Israel back to their homeland. 1947, all the world stage looking upon a little strip of Israel, they're still standing against Israel. But God's word be true and every man be a liar. And I want you to, if you, if you know anything about history, and you can read the remainder of this text from 17 on, and you can read about the next prophecy, which was not fulfilled yet. And it talks about God bringing Israel or Judah and the northern tribes back together. That has not happened. But God said that these two sticks will be one. And you read the prophecy. So what I'm here to tell you is God's word be true. We stand on God's word. And we're in the middle of a fulfillment of the revelation of what God is doing. And, and there's a little insight. And, and I like the study of the word of God. And he says to Ezekiel, he says, tell Judah be one stick. And tell Ephraim the other stick. We say, well, why Ephraim? If you remember, it was one of Joseph's sons, but it was the younger son. And Ephraim means the double fruit, double blessing. Not Manasseh. Manasseh was the older son. And if you remember, when Jacob was blessing him, he switched his hands. And the blessing was on Ephraim. The, the powerful prophecies that start to unfold in God's Word. It just makes me want to think, hallelujah. 
See, the more you know of God's Word, the stronger you are in your faith and your promises. See, the little, the, if we don't know God's Word, we just rely on these simple things. And when they're okay, but then you're like a wave of the sea. You're tossed back and forth by things of this world. Is it going to be or is it not going to be? Oh, don't, don't get that wrong, because I have struggled too, friend. I have struggled with doubts. I have, you know, I go through times of despair, and it, you're not alone. But that's why we're here together, to build one another up in the most holy faith. Amen. To be there, to encourage one another, to spur one another on, to point here at the Word of God, to be true, and to, to encourage each other with it. That's it. You see, that's what we got, my friend. We, get, we are children of the Most High God. And don't you think that your Heavenly Father wants you to know the truth? Don't you think that your Heavenly Father wants you to know the prophetic word? It's not prophetic word as far as fortune telling. It's the prophetic word of forth telling. What is already taking place in God's mouth. What a wonderful word we have. Amen? I, I'm encouraged that God is doing a new thing here in Weekstown, New Jersey. God is stirring up some things. Revival is coming here, my friends. And you say, well, Pastor, man, the things, it, it just seems like everything around me is just breaking down. You know, relationship, there's, there's family issues, there's health issues, there's financial issues. Everywhere I go, you know, what's going on? Do you know that uh, Gideon said the same thing? Gideon said this, if God is with us, why has all this happened? Huh? If God is with us, why has all this happened? And the Word of God said to Gideon, you're a mighty warrior. I don't feel like a warrior. Here, I'm hiding there in a the wine press, you know. I'm hiding from all the Midianites coming. I'm hiding from all the things that are going on in the world today. I can't, you know, why don't we just take our little Christianity and go on the corner? God says, you're a mighty warrior. You're a mighty warrior. I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. These are the things that we stand on. These are the things that we're well up with. These are the things that we rise up. We are mighty warriors, children of God. We put on this full armor of God. We gird our feet. We gird our belt. We gird our, our breast with the shield of faith, breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, our feet fitted with the, the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Uh, we take up the shield of faith and extinguish all the flaming arrows that try to shoot against us. Uh, and we take the five fold of faith. God will do what he said he will do. I am who God said I am. I can do all things who give me strength. God's word be true and let every man be a liar. And God's word is actively working in my life. And then finally, my friends, you take up the sword of the Spirit and you slay the giants that come against you. Because there are many out there, are there not? There are many giants that try to take your mind captive. There are many giants that come up come a, a, upon us on a, a daily way, but we refute them with the Word of God. Because I'm standing on the promises of God. <clears throat> and next week we can do part two. I'm just going to have to I'm sorry, I won't break it. Let me just finish this. Verse 9, he said to me, prophesy the breath. Prophesy, son of man, to say the breath. Thus say the Lord, come from the four winds of breath and breathe on these slain so they may live. And so I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived. And they stood upon their feet, and it was an exceedingly great army. Amen. There's a point that has to be made here very quickly. You notice when he first spoke to the dry bones that the sinews, the, the tendons came upon them. And then the meat of the body came upon them. Or then skin came upon them. But it said that there was no breath in them. 
There was no breath in them. That's why Jesus said, unless you are born again, you shall not see the kingdom of God. We will not be born of the flesh, born of a husband's will or even a human's decision, but born of the Spirit. We must be born of the Spirit if we want to see the kingdom of God. And that's why in this text it says, now prophesy to the breath. And now the breath of the Spirit of God is what gives forth life. Jesus said that the flesh counts for nothing. It is the Spirit that gives forth life. And the words that I speak to you, prophecy, are spirit and life. <clears throat> and, and it is the life that's going to raise you up and give life to you. Because if without the breath of God, there's no life in us. You understand? And we must be born again by trusting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Don't cling to the things of this world. Release them and receive what God has for us. Those who receive Him and believe on Him, He gave the right to become a child of God. And I want to close with this. And one of my favorite preachers, he always closes not always, but he closes something like this. He says, <clears throat> there was a family, a very well-to-do family, and they had a very expensive vase in their house. <clears throat> and their little girl, about six or seven years old, put her hand in the vase, but she couldn't get her hand out of the vase. And they, they tried so hard, but they put oil and butter, trying to get her hand out of there. and, and uh, the last resort was to have to break the vase. Very, very expensive vase. Been in the family for years. <clears throat> and they broke the vase, and the little girl's hand was clenched inside the vase. And they opened her hand, and they said, Honey, why didn't you open your hand? And what was in her hand was a penny. And she said, Well, I would lose my penny. You see, many today hold on to their pennies. When God has the best for you. We, we clinch to the things of this world. When God says let go. And he will fill it. With the greatest. And the best. Of the treasures of heaven. So seek first the kingdom of God. All those other things. He will add unto you. Salvation is the greatest treasure. Given to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many who will not let go of certain things. Maybe it's their pride that will not allow them to say that I need you, Lord. You see, it is God who poses those that are prideful because we have to come to the one and acknowledge that yes, we are sinners and we need saving. That's letting go of everything. Let go. Let God. Don't go and get the end of your life and be holding on tightly to some menial, meaningless thing in this world that will count for nothing. So let, let's pray. I, I, I'm just excited what God's doing here um, in Weekstown. I hope you're excited also. God is doing a new thing. Amen. Can you not perceive it? Can you not perceive this? Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you for not leaving us as we are. Thank you, Father, for breathing life into us, Lord. That your breath, Lord, that has gone across this sanctuary, Lord, touching lives, those that feel broken, those who feel despair, those who feel hopeless, God, I know you're birthing new life into them, new hope, new joy, Father. Just bless each one today. Father, for those who have come out, Lord, continue to inspire them, to encourage them. Father, as we link arms together, Father, as we go through this life together, knowing, Lord, that you have already overcome this world. And we thank you for that. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Thank you.